My name is Chris Tymor. I work with BirdLife Australia in the Woodland Birds team um, and we work on projects uh, that are threatened and declining woodland birds across southeastern Australia. We're here today um, to talk particularly about the swift parrot and its identification, its threats, its opportunities and um, you know, how we can help it out into the future. So the swift parrot is um, one of the iconic woodland birds. It's, it's one of very few migratory parrots. It breeds in Tasmania and flies across to the mainland to forage over the winter months. In the past few decades, its numbers have really been decimated um, and the recent estimates suggest there may be as few as 750 birds left in the wild. Um, so we're calling upon citizen scientists to help us find out where the birds are occurring when they're on the mainland. Um, it's a massive area from southern Queensland all through New South Wales, Victoria, towards the South Australian border where they forage each year. But where they forage each year changes depending on flowering patterns and the availability of other food like, like lerp. Um, so citizen scientists make a, a really critical contribution to knowledge about where they're moving in a particular year, what species they're foraging in and how their numbers are faring. Um, so BirdLife Australia and the Central West Local Land Services are working together to, um, to help protect the swift parrot and also the region honey eater, another threatened woodland bird. And we've got a, a joint project we've been working on the last four years that is a mixture of, of monitoring and um, habitat restoration and protection. Um, so the local land services, they've got a lot of great connections with, with landholders through the area and supporting their work. Um, and BirdLife assists by undertaking the, some of the, the fine detailed monitoring activity to detect you know, where these birds are occurring, uh, when and um, you know, what's attracting them to the area at a particular time. Yeah, yeah. So, the Central West area is an area that you know, may not get a large number of swift parrots every year, but in the years that they do visit and visit in numbers, the Central West is a you know, really important stopping off point and foraging area. So all the work that the LLS and land care and landholders are doing means that once they move into this area, they know they can get a, a good feed, you know, spend some good time here to build up their resources for when they you know, have to migrate back across Bass Strait to Tasmania. Um, so citizen scientists are critical because there's just not enough researchers to visit all these areas. And the bird watchers and bird enthusiasts across the range of the swift parrot really inform the science and conservation for the species. So having you know, dozens, hundreds of, of observers and eyes and ears across their range, we can together build a, a really good picture of, of how they're moving in across the landscape, and why, what's attracting them. Yeah, so I'd encourage people that are they're interested in the swift parrot. I mean, everybody can make a contribution. Learning what the species looks like is really important. Learning what it sounds like is also important, and there's good apps and websites. So I'd encourage citizen scientists or you know, new bird watchers. It's a species where even the beginner, because you're just focusing on a single species, you can, you can learn that species well. Whenever you see a flowering tree or maybe a tree with lots of um, the little white lerps that they love to feed on. If you see one of those, stop and have a look, have a listen, spend 10 minutes to just see if you can see a swift parrot or what other nectar feeders are there and, and um, yeah, add those records to a, a fauna database such as bird data and um, the scientists will, will collect that information and, and make good use of it. All the big jumps have been made through citizen scientists and now we're at a stage where the researchers really, more than ever, need the citizen scientists' help to identify the species and protect and enhance their habitats.